Hey everyone, welcome back to the Makeup Chair. Today I'm gonna to talk about contouring and highlighting, and not just contour and highlighting, but why contour and highlighting is actually four different things. We just think of it as two, contour, highlight. But it's actually four different things. We've got our contour, bronzer, highlight, and highlighting. There are four different things. They make a massive difference once you know this technique, and I promise you, your technique is gonna look flawless and polished and professional. Whether you're doing this on yourself or you're doing it on a client, you need to know these four things. So let's get started. So why do we have four different parts? Well, contour is basically a shadowing effect. So the contour is the natural bone structure of your face, only maybe more emphasized. This is a great way to add a little bit more shape to your face, bring out the structure, bring out kind of a 3D effect rather than looking flat in an image or on camera. But then your bronzer is actually there for creating a little bit more softer shape. So it's not as harsh and defined with the shadow, it's a little softer. And where you apply them is very different as well, even though it's, it's kind of the same thing. That's the tricky thing about bronzers and contours is they do seem very, very similar. The easiest way to remember this is your bronzer is anything to do with the sun. So your bronzer is basically where the sun hits the skin. So that's usually across the top of the forehead, on the top of the nose, maybe on the tip of the chin, and then across the top of the cheekbones. Your contour then is on the low parts. So basically if the sun was on you and then you created a shadow, that's where your contour goes. So your contour is gonna go along here just underneath the cheeks because the cheeks stick out a little bit and you have like a hollow underneath. That's where your contour is gonna go and also along the jawline as well. If we applied our darkened contour to the top parts of her face, it can look kind of muddy. So that's why we don't do it. So here's our contour and this is our bronzer. Our bronzer is usually a lot bigger because it's applied with a bigger brush, so that's why they tend to be larger in size. This is actually an eyeshadow, but it's pretty much the same size as a regular contour or blush would be. And even though this is an eyeshadow, it works great for applying a little bit of a shadowing effect underneath those cheeks and on the jawline as well. Whereas this then, with a little bit more warmth, will work around the rest of the face to add some shape, definition, and to kind of create a 3D effect. So the combination between the two of them is amazing. And this is why I have to share it with you guys because I see a lot of people using this in the hollow of their cheeks. It doesn't work. It doesn't work the same way as this baby does. So let me show you guys how to use this. So I'm gonna be using this brush, which is kind of like the F20, it's just a little smaller. It is the MF56. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna roll one side into the contour just like that. So we get a very small amount, that's all you need. Tap off the excess, and then you're gonna roll this along here, underneath the hollow of the cheeks. Now this shade that I have picked has a purpley tone in it, so it's almost like a gray undertone in your bronzer, if that makes sense. So it's a shade darker than your skin with a gray undertone, and that gray can be more of an olivey gray undertone, it can be more of a reddy gray undertone, or in my case, a purpley gray undertone, which actually is very similar to my lips, and that's why it works really well for my skin tone. So once I've applied that, I then buff it up very slightly just to blend it out. I also apply it along my jawline, just to kind of sharpen up this area too, so we have more of a sweeping jawline. Keep it really, really close to the edge of the face. Now what we don't wanna do is just leave it like this because we do add a little bit of warmth, especially when you're going that cool. So then I take my bronzer shade and a larger brush this time. So this is the MF47. And I just take a little bit of this and then go in with a bit of that on the back of your hand. And that'll just cool it down ever so slightly so it won't be too warm. But also this would be too cool to apply onto the forehead because it looks very, very muddy. And we want to start around the hairline. And this is just going to add a little bit more structure to the face. So we're not just very flat looking. Particularly if you're wearing a full coverage foundation, you can end up looking quite flat. So this is just a great way to add a bit of definition. See the definition it's added to just to the side of the face. So you're gonna do the little sweep of the one, two, three, just like that. So now that we have our bronzing and our contour done, it is time to move on to highlighter. So I'm really pale, so I actually use a white highlighter. It's anything basically that's one shade lighter than your skin with a matte finish. And what you wanna do with this is sort of a brightening technique. So brightening up underneath the eyes, you can bake with this as well. For any areas where you want a matte finish, 
but have a lighter color. That's what your highlighting powder does. Then you also have your highlighter. So a highlighter is anything with a little bit of shimmer, which we're always a big fan of. I wonder if it'll ever go out of fashion. I'm not sure it will. But this is great for just catching the light ever so slightly, maybe across the cheeks, the lip, certain areas of the face. So that's what this is. These are exactly the same color, but one has a shimmer, so one has like a glittery kind of glowy finish, metallic-y sort of finish, and one is completely matte. And I apply them in different ways as well, so we're going to start off with a matte shade. So I'm going to be using this brush, which is the MF35. It's an angled brush. And what I like about this is it's very similar to the one that we use for contouring, but it has an angle. So it sort of hugs the jawline, hugs the cheeks. This will give you a great effect. And I apply this just under where we have applied our contour to give us a sharper effect. So I just pounce this on the skin. And I also do a little bit on my chin, top of the lip, center of the forehead, and also then underneath my eyes and alongside the nose as well. So when I apply it alongside the nose and then bring it underneath the eyes and along the cheeks, it kind of makes your nose look thinner because it blends your nose in with your cheeks, if that makes sense. So I apply it quite heavily. I kind of stipple it on with a lot on the brush and I barely touch the skin so it's sort of just landing on the skin. See how different that looks now? It's just a little lighter than my foundation so it adds more dimension. Just the same way as your contour shade with its slightly darker tone can add more dimension, so can a lighter shade as well. Because I have dry skin, I don't tend to bake for very long. I brush this off quite quickly. So it's been on for like a minute or so and I just buff that off then. And then you are good to go. And now we're gonna move on to the highlighter shade. So the highlighter shade has a little bit of shimmer in it. I'm gonna be using this type of a brush, which is just a soft fluffy brush. This is also in the marble set. And I'm just going to apply this shade on the high points of the skin. So basically where the sun would hit it so that you catch that light. It's all about catching the light. And when it comes to picking out your highlighter, you wanna make sure that it works with your skin tone. You should never be able to see it unless the sun is on it, that's the rule. So if you have a highlighter that's a little bit too warm for you and it's a little bit too dark for your skin tone, it doesn't work as a highlighter. Whereas this shade catches the light beautifully and when I'm looking straight on, you can't see it. So it's only when the light is on it that you can see it. And it's not just the tops of the cheeks that I like to do. I also like to do the cupid's bow, the chin, just a little bit on the chin. Also along the bridge of the nose here too. And then also the tip of the nose, which I don't really like to do so much because I don't like my nose, but you can do it if you want. And also then around the forehead too, just like that. So just curving from the arch of the brow up just in this sort of emotion, just catches the light beautifully, gives you that gorgeous shine, gives you that gorgeous glow. And so that is how I use my highlighter, so you get that nice glow to the skin, particularly if you have skin like me that's always really, really dry. Don't judge my skin today. I need to have a little bit of a facial tonight, but usually it looks a little, little bit better than this, but the highlighter camouflages everything because it bounces the light away and you can get away with slightly drier skin, which is awesome. So that is the finished look. I finished off with my red lipstick. I decided not to go for blush because I always like to make sure that my blush and my lipstick match, unless you're wearing red, because otherwise you will look like a clown. So you wanna skip blush if you're wearing a red lipstick and I wanted to let that contour and highlight do its work, so that's the only thing that's on my face. And it adds a lot of dimension, it still adds a little bit of life to the skin, and then your only color is your lipstick. Oh, and one more thing that I wanna mention because I looked at my face up close and I did notice something. Make sure that highlighter isn't coming out too far. You have the tendency to kind of over apply your highlighter, which is awesome, work away. Just make sure it doesn't come up to that hairline. That hairline has to remain either the same color as your foundation or that bronzy tone and keep that highlighter curved around the eye instead. It'll make a massive difference. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely check out the other videos on the screen. I have a twisty chair, which I'm very excited about. It is a brand new chair for me. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to click subscribe and if you learned something, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.